Everybody's excited about this this moment, the biggest since you took them to the championship in 11. And it, kind of a surprise for a lot of us. What did you think about how they were able to, to win this series? Well, you know, I was here in January, and when we played these guys, um, I said at that time that these guys, that, that Dallas was a real threat in the West. Um, and the reason is, you know, their defense, it travels. Um, they have great playmaking, great versatility, both offensively and defensively. They've got five men that can switch, um, that can, you know, play big or small. And, you know, Kleber uh, stretches the floor. And, you know, <clears throat> this eerily reminds me of, uh, of the 2011 run because it, it started off not really with – much expected. A lot of people thought we were going to lose the first round series. A lot of people predicted that Utah would beat Dallas with Luca being out for uh, two or three games or whatever it was. And, uh, you know, they took care of Utah and the momentum has just continued to go. And, you know, when you beat the, when you beat the best team in the league as decisively as they did yesterday, you know, you, you are playing a high, high level of basketball. Coach, it feels like, uh, I mean, Luca really embraces the the big moments, the pressurized moments, and I'm curious, how quickly did you discover that with him where it's like, okay, the, this dude is, he does not shy away. If anything, he embraces these massive pressurized moments. Yeah, he's just, that's that's who he is. You know, his whole life has been in the spotlight, and he learned early on that ultimate respect comes from winning, and uh Really, that's all he's interested in. And, you know, you just marvel at, at the things that he's able to do consistently on the floor <clears throat> night after night, day after day, you know, depending what time the games are on. Um, but he controls the game. Um, he controls the game offensively. Um, defensively, he's, he's taken his game to another level um, this year. And it's going to be a fascinating series between Dallas and Golden State. You know, the, the styles are, are quite different. You know, Golden State wants to play fast. Um, you know, Dallas plays at a at a slower tempo, but they're 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 very very concise with what they're doing, um, and extremely well coached. You know, Jason Kidd has done a phenomenal job with this team, and you know the fact that he was the quarterback of our 2011 team. You know, it's it's gonna you know it's gotta it, it's gotta ring um, very similarly for him as well, Coach. Uh... I miss you. I'm not going to lie about that. And uh, but I, I know you're you're doing what you want to do, and and I'm I'm really really happy for you. And I appreciate you always being really super great to me. Uh, you mentioned Jason Kidd, and you know, and what? How does that transition? Like you know, he had opportunities at other places. Do coaches learn along the ways for how to for their next job in order to to have the success that they have? Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, um, you know, I guess you look at his career, he, he took over a team that was, you know, a veteran team in Brooklyn. Um, you know, they had Pierce and they had Garnett and they had a few other guys that were, you know, high-level players, but toward the end of their careers, um, they had a slow start and he learned very quickly, you know, how humbling the NBA can be. And he did a phenomenal job that year of bringing that team to the playoffs. And I think they won the first round. Um, <clears throat> then he goes to Milwaukee and, you know, Milwaukee, he, he's the one that put Milwaukee ahead of schedule. Yeah. And it, it, would, it was probably the reason that, um, that things came to an end there. That, you know, things just got accelerated, I think, in the first or second year. And, um, and we all know that, you know, those of us that have been around any professional sport for any period of time, you know, managing expectations is always going to be the most challenging thing. So, uh, but this, this situation made perfect sense, you know, him coming back to the Mavericks family, um, so many similarities between uh, Jason Kidd's game, you know, as one of the all-time great players on the floor and Luca's game. And so you knew that there would – um, they would be able to relate at a very high level there, and uh, and Jay Kidd is great. He's just a he's a no nonsense, pull no punches guy. Um, that's into one thing, and that's winning. And he was he was always 
uh, the guy that would do anything to win, whether it was a, a game, whether it was a drill you're introducing, you know, whether it was some card game on the airplane, you know, that's, that's all he's ever been about. Coach, you told me a long time ago when you got Jalen Brunson, you said, hey, watch this kid. This kid's tough. This kid will do whatever he has to do. You have to be pretty proud about the way that he's developed as a player, don't you? Yeah, no, no question. I mean, Brunson's been great. I guess this is his fourth year now. Each year he's gotten better. I mean, there's a group of guys there that really put in a lot of work and labored, you know, behind the scenes for a long time during, you know, a, a pretty arduous two, two and a half year rebuild. You talk about Brunson, you talk about Finney Smith, you talk about Kleba. Um, you know, Powell's in that mix. Powell, you know, really reinvented his game, became a, a full-time center that's now one of the most versatile guys at that position in the game. And um, so, you know, it's it's heartwarming to see those guys that, uh, that we spend so much time with as sure. a staff, you know, continue to take this, take it to this kind of high level. And uh, I'll tell you, they've, they've got a, they've got a real shot here. And um, it's been, uh, it's, it's, it's been really interesting to watch their two series and really all these series, but this golden state uh, Maverick series is going to be um you know, one of, of contrasting styles, and I think everybody will be watching it very, very closely. It's Coach Rick Carlisle here with you on The Fan. What do you think about the discussion as far as Luca being the best player in the game right now? Does does he deserve consideration? Is he that guy already to you? How do you handle that? Well, you know, again, I'll, I'll go back to January when I was here, and, uh, you know, I was it was the pregame uh, media availability and um, you know I addressed quite a few things relative to the Maverick situation and w- one of the things that I said about Luca at that time was that if he's not the best player in the world right now and that was you know January 29th or 30th or 31st if he's not the best player in the world right now he's right on the cusp and you got to be careful with these <laughs> statements, you know, because you got to you got to coach and play against some of these other guys, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's, you know, he's in that very, very top tier. And you know, I, I don't, I don't have any question in my mind that there will be, you know, multiple MB, MVPs in his future. There will be championships in his future, um, and. But he has a real great sense, a real great natural sense for the moment. And, you know, he knows how to mobilize his team. And uh, yet yesterday, you know, or last night, I guess I should say, um, his attitude, you know, really elevated that team right from the beginning of the game. It's uh, former Mavs head coach, NBA champion Rick Carlisle with us here in the G-Bag Nation. Now, Rick, how do you imagine the Suns, or, or excuse me, the Warriors come out of the gates in terms of trying to defend Luca strategically? If you're if you're in Steve Kerr's shoes right now, what are you what are you trying to do to make things difficult on Luca? Great question. You know, I I don't know Iguodala's status. Um, you know, he hasn't started a whole lot of games in recent years for them, but I don't know. I don't even know if he's going to be available. Um, Clay Thompson, high-level defender, you know, Draymond Green could guard him. Um, you know, Peyton obviously is out. That would have given them a, a, another option. Um, look, you got to be ready to throw the kitchen sink at Luka Doncic, you know. Um, and, the, you know, Golden State will play some zone, and you know, they'll do some trapping. Um, <clears throat> But there really has has been no defense devised in the NBA that Luka Doncic has not solved in one you know in some way, shape, or form. So um, again, I mean, you know, you got him on the Dallas side, and you got you know Curry and Thompson on the other side, and, and you know, Poole has emerged as another as another major threat. So um, you know, I really like. Uh, the moves that Dallas has made this year, you know, some of the moves that haven't been widely discussed, I guess nationally probably discussed, you know, Bullock has been a great addition. Um, He's brought real attitude to their defense. Uh, You know, last night, Nilakina was in the game. 
and he was playing, and he's a high, high level defender. Um, you know, Finney Smith is always going to be among the very best and the most underrated guys defending out there. Um, but it's going to be Golden State's movement game versus Dallas's versatility and playmaking and and just attacking, you know, and, and you know, and I don't leave out Dinwiddie either. I mean, look what this guy's done. You know, he's he had those great games when Luca was out in the Utah series and then, you know, yesterday in game seven the guy you know, throws thirty points at at him or whatever it was. And uh so you're looking at two teams with a lot of weapons and this will be this will be highly entertaining. Coach, uh, you know, when I, I was out watching you guys play a couple years ago, with especially seeing Curry play live, it appears to me he is in constant motion. And, and even without the ball, uh, how do you account for a guy that's always moving? And, and is that something you even can account for? Well, he's very unique in that way. Um, you know, most great, great players are about economy of motion. Um, he is in phenomenal condition obviously he runs all over the place his movements on the floor create havoc for opponents i mean you go into games against golden state knowing that you're going to give up you know two three four maybe even five um slips to the basket as teams overreact to him coming off screens and now they have thompson back playing at a high level as well and so you know how will Dallas match up? Um, they've got a they've got a lot of different guys they can throw at at Steph. They got a lot of different guys they can throw at Clay. You know we'll see how they play all the angles and all those kinds of things. But um, you know Dallas has taken a they've taken a, a a simple approach. You know it's it's versatility on offense, versatility on defense, and and a real tough mindset. And uh, they've put themselves in a in a really strong position. How are things going in Indiana, Coach? Things are going well. Interesting, interestingly for me, um, started off with some some teams that uh, were pretty good right off the bat. Um, this has morphed into a little bit of a rebuild. A lot of our issues with winning and losing games had to do with health this year, but uh, you know we've got the lottery tomorrow night. We'll keep our fingers crossed there. Uh, we'll get our vets healthy and. Uh, you know, we we were, we were able to develop a lot of young players this year, which is great for the organization. Um, and so, uh, moving forward, you know, I think uh, I think things are good. I've been very fortunate. You know, I've had a chance to work with great people in in Dallas. You know, Kevin Pritchard, Chad Buchanan, and uh, Herb Simon, the owner of the Pacers, are great people. Mark's Mark's still a great friend. Um, you know, Dallas has brought in great people. Nico Harrison's done an amazing job there. Uh, Jason and, and his staff, you know, I know all these guys in, in some way, shape, or form, and uh, they brought in a real high level of, um, you know, people and, and person, and, and, and they're just, uh, you know, this is, this is what it's all about right now. This is a really exciting time for mass basketball. Don't take this the wrong way, Coach. You know we have the utmost respect for you, but I was wondering if you had a perspective on how they were able to make a great defense out of similar players was that the impact of Bullock or or maturity? How how did they transform it into like a top five defense? Yeah, I think there's there was a that Jason was able to bring an attitude that uh, was needed. Uh, I do think the the peripheral moves have have helped. Um, and look, they they didn't they didn't get off to a great start. Things yeah. were you know shaky early. Um, you know, Luca was banged up, and it's a long season. And you know, Jason knew that. And I think if I know him, you know, he he stayed very consistent with his messaging. And um, you know, it's it's uh, it's been great to see. You know, and I'm and I'm really happy for him. He, <clears throat> you know, what he did for us, what he did for me in my career. You know, playing with us here in Dallas uh, was was something I could. I could never repay, and uh, and I'm happy for his success, and uh, I wish them success going forward. Well, I know a lot of Mavs fans feel like they could never repay you for what you did for the team, and and perhaps the last great thing was recommending him as the as the next uh, Mavs head coach. So so thanks for that, and thanks for your time. Give him hell, coach. We'll be pulling for you, gentlemen. Be well. 